everyone welcome back as part of the today's lecture again we will continue some more examples on these locators concept okay some more examples on these locators concept if you go back uh, these are the various locators that are supported by our karate framework and they have given an example on a css selector and as well as an xpath these are the first two locators they have given so one is a css selector and the second one is an xpath they have a defined some syntaxes out over there we will study and we have and locators if at all any object is having some text and if i want to identify by its text then these are some locators for the same okay so in the today's session we will focus on the xpath and a css and in the next session we will see how exactly we can identify an object by using its text Okay, fine. So immediately a question that comes in our mind. Surendra, we were able to identify an object by its ID property, uh, right? By using its ID property. Why we need to use either CSS or an XPath? See, in general, whenever we are working on any particular applications, if the desired object is not having any default locators, in such cases, we will use this XPath or CSS. So the XPath is having its unique syntax. So I will tell you the XPath syntax for a generic web application. And then we will see this syntax in how are we going to utilize it in our Karate framework too. Slash slash. Okay. Slash slash. HTML tag name. HTML tag name open braces at the rate attribute type is equal to in the single quotes you need to specify the attribute value whatever the attribute type is there you have to specify that value in the single quotes so let us go to the browser once we have a source demo application right click and inspect here and it has a placeholder is an attribute I want to write down an XPath. So here, copy the username value. And it is a placeholder, right? Everything is in a lowercase. Let us go back to our document. Slash slash. What is the tag name? See, the tag name here is input. Right after that symbol, whichever the name is there, it's going to be the tag name. So here, I'm entering input. Open braces at the rate a placeholder is equal to in the single quotes you need to specify the syntax perfect you have a created an xpath but how would we know whether it is a valid xpath or not so the only thing is within the browser itself whenever you are here if you press a control F, a finder will be opened. And if you write down your XPath, if it is a valid XPath, it will show up here. If it is an invalid XPath, also it will show up here. Slash slash, it's an input. Open braces at the rate a placeholder is equal to. This should be placed within a single code. I just updated it. That's it. Okay. At the rate a placeholder is equal to this is the one. So it's not a working. Okay. So what is the tag name here? The see here we have a place at this X path, but still we are not getting it. Let's see. So what's wrong? Slash slash. So you need to place two slashes here. Slash slash input at the rate a placeholder is equal to one of a one so it means with the given locator there is only one object and that object is highlighting in an yellow color now you have an xpath copy this xpath go to your karate documentation if at all any object is having an xpath you just need to place a slash that's we have already added in a syntax directly you can write it down the code so what I'm doing right now means, let me go to my editor here. You know, earlier we have a created a three different scenarios. Hence, I have a marked it as a three different scenarios here. 
okay i just kept it as a three different scenarios and right now i'm commenting everything in order to comment you know control question mark is the keyboard shortcut key that you can use it or what i am doing right now means for these examples let me create a new feature file okay new file i'm naming it as demo ui2 dot feature okay demo ui2 dot feature and i don't want all this content let me delete the whole content feature what is the feature validate application behavior with a uh, various locators and right now the scenario using xpath given when then all these are one and the same so that's the reason whichever the scenario that you have a created for this i'm copying it and i'm placing here so this scenario is navigating to the source demo application where in which it's trying to enter here so instead of this value let us place this x path so here this is what the x path is copy the x path from here come back to the editor and place it here this is what your x path is okay this is what your x path is perfect if you have any issues place a double quote here instead of a single quotes i kept a double quote now let me run this a feature file run as a cucumber feature so it's getting executed let us see whether it is performing the operations there or not so it was supposed to open the source demo application and on that source demo application it should enter a value okay so on the source demo application it should enter a value in the username text field let us see we created an x path and it worked successfully so this is the way how exactly you can use an x path so as of now we created an x path for the username field let us create an x path for the password field too even the password is having a placeholder so slash slash input open braces at the rate of placeholder is equal to i was able to identify this locator copy this locator go to your program here then again input what is that input that you want to enter here so this is the thing this is what my locator is there I want to enter the password. So on this application, they have a given the user credentials. You can use this as a username and this as a password. They have a clearly given those details. Copy the username, update the username. Okay. So copy the username, come back, update the username. Copy the password and update the password too. Perfect. So we entered the username and as well as a password. After entering the username and a password, what is the next action that it is pending in order to log in into an application? You just need to click on that button. So right click, inspect, and it has a data test or a type. So let us take a data test and write down an X path. So slash slash input open braces at the rate data test is equal to, I have a defined it. Oh. Where is this locator? It wasn't pasted. Yes, that's it. I was able to identify the login button to come back then. So guys, what is the command that we need to use in order to click on a button? So you can use a click command here. Click and directly specify that locator. Whichever the locator is there, just specify it. A click is a command that we need to use. Enter the username, enter the password and click on that particular button. So in order to enter a value in a text field, we need to use an input. In order to click on any particular button, click is a command that we need to use. These two things we have learned. Let me run my program and see whether it is entering the username, entering the password and clicking on a login button or not. Let us cross check. And guys, if you click 
clearly observe it's launching a browser, but it is not a full in the mode. It's in a minimized mode. We will see moving ahead in the upcoming lectures uh, how exactly we can maximize the browser and how exactly we can uh, keep, keep the browser in a full screen also that uh, we will study moving ahead. So I entered the username, the program, entered the password and it clicked on a login button. That's the reason this screen got uh, populated. Okay, that's the reason this uh, screen got uh, populated. Okay, so this is the way how exactly you can create a program to perform a login operation uh, using its XPath. So right now I'm copying this scenario from here and the other feature file is there, right? I'm just replacing this scenario here. So guys, uh, I'm maintaining every feature file, whatever I have created in a demo user one dot a feature. In demo two dot a feature, I'm writing down the content and I'm switching back that content to the demo UI one dot a feature. All these feature files I will be sharing you at the end. You can find it in a first lecture or a second lecture. We will place the lectures within the videos itself so that you can have an access to all the feature files that I'm creating within a session. Okay, that's fine. Perfectly all right. So I learned about an XPath and I have used it successfully. And if you compare the syntaxes between XPath and a CSS, see, this is what an XPath is. Okay, so this is what an XPath is. Let us put this particular XPath here and let us put the syntax of a CSS too. So that that will be easy for us to compare. Okay. Above is X path. And below is CSS. What is the difference between X path and a CSS? X path has a two slashes, which CSS don't have. That's fine. And then X path has an at the rate, which CSS don't have. And on a right hand side, XPath has a single quote which CSS don't have. So if I have an XPath for a particular object, I can directly write down a CSS for the same object. See here, copy this XPath. Let us put in this document. It shouldn't have these two slashes. That's fine. At the rate symbol shouldn't be there. And here, the single quotes shouldn't be there. If I'm comfortable with an XPath, I can write down a CSS too. Perfectly all right. Let's come back here. I'm making a heading as using CSS selector. And here, remove the two slashes. Remove the at the rate and remove the single quote. All the three points, I made a correction for the first object. I'm doing the same thing for the second object. Okay, I'm doing the same thing for the second object. And I'm repeating the same thing for the third object too. So here we learned about an XPath and later we converted that XPath into a CSS selector too. Let me run my program and see this time using the CSS selector, whether it is performing the operations or not. See from a end user perspective, there won't be any difference. It's gonna go and interact with the browser itself. But internally the mechanism earlier we used an XPath and right now we are using a CSS selector. That's the basic difference. Apart from that, everything is going to be one and the same itself. So it should open the application. It should enter the credentials and should click on a login button like earlier. Perfect. The script got executed successfully. So this is the way how exactly we can use an XPath and a CSS as a locators. The next available locators is identifying by its link text. If at all any object is having a text, how are we going to identify? That we will study as part of the next session. Thank you. Goodbye.